Hello, I'm Claudia Orengo from heartmate.es and today I want to show you how to create an overall seamless pattern like this one in which you cannot see where it starts or where it begins and you can print and use it for any um, pattern you may need to print, a website, anything. So I'm going to create it with Photoshop and I'm going to teach you how to do it step by step. Uh, for To create this pattern I'm using my illustrations in watercolors and you can download them from Creative Market. I will leave you the link below if, in case you want it. But uh, this is what, um, what I'm including in the package. You can see it's many illustrations of leaves with small berries and something you need to notice is that they have no white areas so they are prepared to to only have transparent instead of white and that's something very important when creating patterns because we want to keep the transparency of our background so if you want to use your illustrations be sure that you are using them without uh, without the background you're cutting them and you're leaving them clean with transparent backgrounds so with this said let's go ahead and create our document what we're gonna do is press command and in Photoshop and I like to work with square because it's easier when creating patterns but you can do it with any size you want uh, 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels it's okay 300 pixels for the resolution it's the best because it's a high resolution and by working with the higher you can be sure that this pattern will be ready to use for printing for anything for, for fabrics but if you want to later use it with websites or any screen project you have, you can always go down and just lower the resolution. And finally, I will select the RGB mode because it keeps the brightness of my paintings. But if later on you need to print this pattern, just remember to, to change your document to CMYK and that's all. So... Let's press OK and here we have our document clean. If we go to layers or window layers, you can see that we only have our background layer. So let's go ahead and start adding some illustrations. I'll go to my folder and just select a few of them. Probably I think I'm going to go with five mm -hmm. like this and just drag and drop them over Photoshop. If you don't see Photoshop down here, don't worry, go down, select your Photoshop, wait until it opens, go inside, wait until it opens, and now you can leave it go. Uh, just forget about the size and press intro until you have them all placed. And the first thing you need to do is select all your layers by pressing Shift you select the first one, press shift and select the last one like this, you select them all together, right click and rasterize layers like this. Our file will not be so heavy and our layers are inside the file, not connected to the original files. Okay, now it's time to make them smaller by pressing command T. You select them all and don't forget to press shift while dragging and making it smaller something like this will work well so something important to note is that i like to work with the selection tool in auto selection mode you can see it here on the top left corner because this auto selection tool what it does is that if i now I, i'm deselecting everything but if I anything I want to, to move, I just go and click and move it. You see? Now I want to move this dark one and I can move it. But if I don't have this auto selection in layer, not in group, if I don't have it checked, and now I want to move this light one here, what's happening is that I'm still moving the last one. And that's because my layer here on the panel is still selected. So if I want to move this one, I will need to know which one is it, click and then move it. And as you can see, when you have overlapping layers, it's difficult to know which one is which. 
so that's why for me it's easier to just select this and it's like illustration like, like illustrator sorry like the um, like the other adobe program so if you click anything you move that and you forget if you are selecting or not the layer the layer so with that said let's see that some of my illustrations they are smaller and some are bigger so i'm gonna click and by pressing shift i can select more than one and again i'm gonna click for the big ones command t make them a little bit smaller to be in the size of the others and probably this one it's bigger than the others okay and now we have it ready so now is the time to create to start creating our pattern we need to find a way to not have a unique direction in our pattern so we need the leaves or the illustrations that you are using going up down in any direction so that if we print a fabric from it um, we will not worry if we are cutting the fabric in one direction or sewing it in another we will always see the pattern going good and that's something very important when designing overall patterns especially for for fabric so just feel free to uh, to put your illustrations as you want and arrange them okay and i think like this it will be ready to go okay so as you can see i'm not working on the borders because um if i cut something like this what's gonna happen when i repeat my pattern is that this part will never show so i will always have a leaf cut and that will be super ugly so to start just work on the center and now i'm going to show you how to fill these borders without cutting your illustrations okay so let's say we have them as we want something like this it's going to you're going to stay here <coughs> longer and longer just trying the best position but just for the purpose of this tutorial let's work with this um so let me show you the next and very important step is to just select all your layers drag them into this folder here to create a group you can name the group by double clicking on the name and just press leaves and then we will duplicate this uh, this group by dragging it to the new folder file here. new uh, new layer sorry and once you have the copy you will click with your right button and say merge group now we have this group together we have a layer with all the illustrations and we have the copy here in the group with each illustration in his original uh, layer so like this we are having like a safe copy to come back in case we want to change something okay something important i noticed when working with uh, with illustrations like this is that some of them they they have like a bigger square even if it's uh, transparent that sometimes go down of your artboard and that for our next step it's going to be a problem so uh, to be sure that nothing is going out we just need to click the cutting tool select delete cropped pixels press intro press intro again and now we have cut everything that was out so with this set remember to select the the, uh, the layer that you have them all together and now go to filter other offset and what's happening now okay wait one second um, if we if we don't want to see the layer below the group we have it's better we press the i like this when we do the filter other offset you will not see nothing else than just the layer we are working on now it's easier for me to explain you what's doing this filter so what it's doing is like imagine you're cutting here with scissors in vertical and horizontal you are dividing your your layer in four squares and you are moving each square to the opposite position so as you can see this here 
it's connected to this here which means that before they were together and they were not here they were here so they are in the opposite place and the same happens with this this uh, little place here it comes from this leaf here so what uh, help us to see this this cutting is the white areas that we are leaving and that we it's better we feel with something when creating our patterns okay you can move this around but i recommend you to to leave it in the half of your artwork so we started with 1000 i cut it to 500 by 500 okay you have it uh, selected to wrap around which is the option that that uh, moves everything to the opposite direct, uh, opposite place so now we click ok and we have cut and rearranged our layer and we need to fill these white spaces so um, let's go back to our illustrations select few more probably with two we will do so just select these two intro intro like before we select them click with your right button rasterize layers command t make them smaller intro and now move them around to fill the pieces so probably here it will be too crowded if i leave this there so i'm gonna see uh, okay let's forget about this for now I'm gonna not show it and with this one I can put it like here or yeah like this it I think it will be nice so now that I know that this one I want it to be here I can select it move it closer to the to the one below and by pressing shift select both layers click with the right button and uh, merge layers like this i have it all again in the same and selecting the same layer i can go and do filter other offset again and try to move until yeah until i see this white space that i had here and let's see okay if i can find a very thin yeah like this one like this one it will be perfect so i drop it here press intro click with my right uh, button rasterize layer command t make it smaller and just like this i'm filling all the white areas in my um, in my document maybe now uh, okay first i'm gonna just do the same i select both layers i click with my right click merge layers this one here i can delete it because i'm not gonna use it and now maybe i see that here maybe there is a little bit more white space than here so with my selection tool i can select this one remember to only select the ones that they are not cut in the borders so i can select this one and move it just a little bit to to see the same white all around okay command d to not uh, to have the selection down and now we are ready to save this as a pattern but to do so remember that we were working with transparent files like this we're keeping the transparency so it's very important that we unselect the eye for the background so we have a really transparent background and now i'm gonna go and select command a in my in my keyboard this will select all what i have in this layer i'm gonna select this layer course and I'm gonna go edit different pattern we can put it a name leaves for example press ok and that's that's saved in our computer so we have it we have it 
in our Photoshop and now we can use it in any file we want. Let me show you. If now we create an, uh, another file and we do it bigger to just to show you that it's gonna repeat and work well. Though with 300 everything the same, okay. And now how are we gonna use it is with the painting tool. The painting tool we create a new layer and we select here pattern instead of foreground. By default it's in foreground, which means that takes your your colors from the palette here. But if you want to paint with any pattern, you have here the option pattern. And in this drop down, you have all the patterns you have created. So the last one is always the one we created last. And just click and you will see it paints everything repeating the pattern bing, 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 and you cannot see where it starts or where it ends so that's all mm, just let me remind you that we have it in in transparent because in case we want this to have a background in another color we can create another layer go here to foreground select any color we want let's say a very light green with paint and you can see that there is no white areas there is nothing we don't need to multiply or, or use strange things we can just change this color or anything we want and we will always have a clean pattern and that's all if you like this tutorial please uh, just give it your like or share it with anyone you want Feel free to comment if you have questions, show me your patterns. I really cannot wait to see what you create. So I hope it was helpful and see you soon. Bye bye.